When we say wireless, we could be talking about light. Flashing a light on and off between ships at sea during the Second World War. Suddenly, we noticed strange light flashes from the peak of a nearby hill. The message in Navy code was baffling. I have information. What could this mean? We signaled the unknown party to advance to the peak. Flashing a laser on and off across distance. But the problem with light is that we're talking about electromagnetic energy vibrating at frequencies measured in the hundreds of trillions of hertz, hundreds of trillions of vibrations per second. And it turns out that as you increase the frequency, the distance that it takes for the light to refract around an obstacle gets longer and longer. And so light has problems with obstacles like buildings and geese and fog and things like that. Now light does refract around objects. This is how we can tell that there are planets around other stars. But the length of the shadow at light frequencies is too long for terrestrial use. So what we do is we lower the frequency of the energy down to gigahertz range. That's a billion vibrations per second and we call that radio. Now one gigahertz is still a pretty high frequency, so we can be talking about fairly wide frequency bands. So most of the time in this course, we're going to be discussing energy vibrating at around one gigahertz within a band of frequencies measured in the megahertz wide. If we wanted to represent speech, we could pick one single pure frequency within the range of frequencies available, and change or modulate some characteristic of that frequency back and forth continuously as an analog of the strength of the sound pressure waves coming out of the person's throat. Or we could change some characteristic of this frequency continuously back and forth as an analog of the strength of the light detected on a detector array as we scan it. That's called television. If we want to communicate ones and zeros, we have a more difficult task because we can't do pulses to represent ones and zeros like we do on LAN cables, for example, because the energy has to vibrate at gigahertz frequencies. It has to vibrate a billion times a second. What we end up doing to communicate ones and zeros is using the same techniques that are used on landline modems where we pick one frequency and change some characteristic of it back and forth to represent ones and zeros. But we don't change things continuously back and forth like an analog technique. We shift back and forth between two choices. One of them represents ones and the other one represents zeros. Over the next few lessons, we'll take a closer look at some of these ideas.